Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mo and today I'll be covering the best budget DSLR that you can buy in 2019. Stay tuned. So about a year ago, I had the ADD and I really needed a second body just in case, you never know. And I went on the scavenger hunt on eBay. Um, my wife said I could only spend $500 on a camera, so I filtered $500 or below and it needed to be full frame because I already had a crop sensor camera. So all the 70Ds, the 7D and the Rebel bodies were out the window. So I needed a full frame budget camera under $500. I could not afford the 6D because it was over $600. I obviously couldn't afford the 5D Mark III or the 1DX or anything like that. Uh, what I did find though was the 1DS Mark II. I bought that camera for $350 and I really, really liked it. I enjoyed using it very much. However, it did not have any video capabilities and it wasn't that great outdoors when the lighting wasn't so perfect it was actually a perfect studio camera but once you take it outdoors of course it's a 17 year old camera uh, I can't fault it but it was a beast for sure uh, next I moved on to the 1D Mark 1 which is not even a full-frame camera it's an APS-H camera it's a 1.4 time crop which is a little bit better than a 1.6 on a crop sensor camera right now with the APS-C again great image quality no video and it was only four megapixels so but like i said it was actually great image quality then i bought the 5d it was a lot of hype about the 5d i knew that it couldn't shoot video but i said let me give it a try since it's a second body anyways it's for backup people say it takes great images so let me try it so i got the 5d and i actually really like the images out of it but I couldn't justify keeping it because it didn't check all the boxes for me. I made a video about it and the majority of the people were unhappy with my review because I said that I returned the camera and they were pretty mad at me, but um, I, I, it just wasn't the camera for me. Every time I bought one of those cameras, when I sold it, I actually I got really lucky because I made a little bit of a profit on top of it. So I made a little bit money and that added to my $500 limit that I had. And I was really lucky because I was able to buy the 5D Mark II for $400 and it came with two lenses. Now, I sold those two lenses for $100, so I ended up really spending $300 on the camera. Now with the remaining $200 plus the money that I made before, I was able to pick up this lens, which is the 24 to 105 for 350. So this whole combination here cost me $650. Like I said, um, I got really lucky. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get the same deal, but this is what I paid for this monster right here. Every one of those cameras that I bought in the past, I was able to go back on eBay and just list them because I wasn't really feeling them. They were great cameras, but I wasn't feeling it 100%. This is the one camera that I've had now for about maybe four months, and I just can't seem to put it down. Even when I'm out on events, I no longer have the ADD. I upgraded to the 6D Mark II because of a sale that was going on, on uh, in Best Buy. I literally paid nothing to upgrade Grade. Even when I'm out on events, I end up just having the 6D Mark II in my camera bag or just maybe wrapped around my shoulder. And this is the camera that's in my hand. This is a combination right here. It's not that it's, it's not just the lens. Obviously, I can put the lens on the 6D Mark II. It's just that this camera is, is just a beast of a camera. Also, one thing that's on this camera that's not on the 6D Mark II is that you're able to actually select your points right on the camera right here using this um, joystick. Uh, it's really convenient, actually. It's better than the system where you would have to click a button on top and then move it around. With this, you just click the joystick once and then you just move your thumb around to be able to control the focusing points. I found that to be really easy. And, and that's probably the reason why I actually use this camera more than my 6D Mark II, which was supposed to be my main camera. I figured, let me just um, use this camera, beat it up. And I, I mean, it's fully weather sealed. You'll be okay. It's built like a tank. When it comes to video, when I need that extra second angle, I have it because I'm able to shoot video with the 5D Mark II. When it comes to um, points and coverage, I know it only has, I think, nine points. Let me just double check because I can't remember. Not that I actually ever counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, nine points. Only has nine points, but surprisingly, the points are spread apart further than the 6D Mark II, which just came out last year. This camera came out, I think, 2005 or four, if I'm not mistaken. I'll fix it in the editing later. If if I'm wrong. Also, another thing that I really like about this camera is the menu system. It's not that far off from the current system that we have right now that you will probably find on most um, bodies that are newer. Unlike the 5D Mark One and the 1DS, the menu system is completely different. It's really old. This is actually really more familiar. I was able to familiarize myself with the menu within minutes of grabbing the camera. It's, it's just perfect for your everyday use. It does not take an SD card. It takes a CF card. 
I was really, really happy with this piece of information right here. It takes the LP E6N battery, which is the same battery that could be found on the 7D, the 80D, the 70D, the 6D, even the EOS R all use the same battery, which is great. So this makes a great second body um, option because you have the batteries to, to swap between your cameras. Finally, obviously it's full frame and I believe it's 20 megapixels. I can't remember. Uh, 5D Mark II megapixels. 21.1. Yep. Which is plenty of megapixels. It's definitely an upgrade from the 12 uh, in the 5D Mark I. In addition to that, it has the added bonus of having a video and a live mode, live view mode. When it comes to video, it's actually really easy. All you have to do is hit the live view mode button and then you would just hit the OK button in the center here to start recording. What's really convenient about this is that you can go between recording videos to taking pictures really quickly without actually having to uh, go back and forth um, on top here, we, we messing up with the dial. The ISO goes from a low of 50 all the way to H2, which is, I believe, 25,600, which is pretty good. The noise performance is not bad at all. Actually, it's really good. Um, it is a full frame camera, so you'll do get better um, low light performance than a crop sensor camera, for example. And of course, you don't have to worry about converting all of your focal points on your lens multiplied by 1.6. So who's this camera for? So if you are a person that needs a second body, I highly recommend this camera. Um, it's better, for example, if you have a 5D Mark III or maybe a 5D Mark IV and you need a second body, I don't recommend you go out and buy a 6D Mark II, for example, because it's overpriced, $1,200, $1,100 for, for literally no reason. I recommend you pick up this as a second body because you can pick it up for $500, $400, maybe on eBay and it has everything you need. You just need to make sure you get one with a low shutter count. Don't get anything over 200,000. Also, if you're a parent that needs to get a camera for their kid, maybe you don't go out and buy a Rebel camera, even though you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna buy one brand new for four or $500. I guarantee you after maybe six months of your kid using that camera, they're gonna wanna, you're gonna get that itch. They're gonna wanna use the full frame camera. They're gonna wanna upgrade the quality of their images and they're gonna end up buying a full frame camera and then they're probably gonna have to buy all new lenses as well because if you're gonna get a crop sensor camera you're probably gonna get um, EFS lenses um, if you're brand new and you're into photography and getting into photography I recommend you do get this camera um, however keep in mind with this camera you cannot get the EFS lenses you can only work with the EF lenses which is the full frame lenses they're a little bit more pricey than the um, EFS lenses because obviously they're meant for professional use but it's not too bad I mean you can still get the uh, 50 millimeter nifty 50 for like 50 bucks so you can get um, if you really want a zoom lens, you can pick up the 70 to 300, you can pick it up for like $100 or $150 and pretty much get all your focal ranges covered. That's what um, newer photographers usually do. So $500 may not be the ideal budget for everybody, but you can definitely have this camera for much less than that, like I have. Um, you just have to keep looking, look on Facebook Marketplace, look on um, eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, but be careful. <laughs> Um, just look everywhere you possibly could and that's I literally looked for this camera I tracked it down for like two months and before I got it and I was really happy with it I have really large hands and it fits really comfortably in my hand Like I don't feel like I'm holding like a little toy camera like when I had my crop sensor camera That's it. So I'm gonna end the video here I'm gonna leave some pictures that I took with this camera so you can see some sample images see what it looks like If you have any questions leave it in the comment section down below if you like this video consider subscribing I do a ton of these camera review videos um, I've gotten my hands on a lot of cameras in the past year uh, And that's why I've been literally documenting the whole thing trying to review it see maybe if you're into it or not And if you like this video give it a thumbs up. All right, that's it. I'm Mo and until next time. Peace